Welcome to Small Aid. We're discussing something very, very basic today. We're talking about the T slot nut. T slot nuts hold your machinery on the Unimat. Very small, very simple to make, and yet a bit harder to get. If you want to buy these, they're a bit pricey. Let's make some and let's make some in a smart way not from scratch so taking a look at this we have 12 millimeter by 12 millimeter and the total thickness is 5.1 millimeters the base thickness which is the most crucial point is 2.7 millimeters so yes, you can turn these out of brass, you can turn these out of steel. Unimat does not like steel, it's a bit hard to work with it because you have a tiny motor, you don't have much punch there. These are pretty expensive if you buy these. And I'm not talking about buying original material, original nuts, T-slot nuts, but newly made uh, from India or China and stuff like that that are machined to the specifics of the Unimat they're quite expensive what can you buy? you can buy these these are also 12 by 12 a bit taller, doesn't matter will not uh, interfere with the function of the T-slot nut in your Unimat these are 6.5 millimeter thick or tall doesn't matter and the base is three millimeters flat so actually if you take a good look at this these two are basically the same except for one thing this is 2.7 millimeter thick and this is three millimeter thick very simple to change that let's do that okay so let's take one of those Put it in there. And we're locking tight because these things tend to fly off. Do remember there's only a tiny bit of metal that holds them, so lock it down. We'll be using some cutting oil. Actually, I prefer to put gloves on. Now, gloves are for the cutting oil. I've been looking for articles about cutting oil and its effect on the human body. And it doesn't appear to be entering the body through the lungs. Although it can because you're smoking it, basically speaking. It can enter through the skin. So, while cutting, this stuff flies all over the place. Use gloves. Right, let's keep that close at hand. Dab there. I'll be taking 0.5 millimeters. Sorry, I'll be taking 0 0.05 millimeters increments. Small machine limitations. And that should have reduced it by half a millimeter. Let's measure. We are at two point five and a half. That's good enough for me. Let's take it out. Which is not that easy. <laughs> All right. Will it fit? Yes, it will fit really, really nicely as you can see. Runs nicely through, not a problem. Okay, 
So, I already made a couple of these. They're really nicely finished. I'm really pleased with those. But, apparently, this is Chinese made. These guys are too fat, meaning they're internal diameter is a bit too large to fit I can't fit those inside I'm trying so what do we do about that well there's a simple solution to that as well I've got a cutaway of this M6 screw now this is something I used to make um, a similar screw to this one just from a longer one so just cut this end off turn it and so on all you need to do is thread this and we'll just we'll put it in the chuck and lock it. I don't mind harming the screw. I will not going to be using it most likely ever again. Now this is tight and I can actually can turn this corner. Verify that you're not touching I'm going to adjust that angle so just the very tip is touching something like that remember we need the diameter of let's check the good ones we need a diameter of so we need a seven and a half yep seven and a half millimeter diameter checking one of these that don't fit they have an eight and a half millimeter diameter which is kind of funny the specs did say seven and a half and some of these are seven and a half but you know this is China Bay made and they probably had a mix of this and that and the worker just took a bunch and chucked it on the conveyor belt and sent it on its way to me no worries, we'll just trim it down. <laughs> Oops. I just stopped the screw for a second and just threaded right through. Okay, let me get something a bit better for that. You know what? On second thought, let's make something better for that. Okay, I'm going to hold the front of the screw and actually this time I do care about the threadings so I'm coating it with aluminum foil really thick aluminum foil and we'll just turn the threadings off allowing the chuck to grab hold of solid metal this time we'll just do that for a second Still got some threadings, but not a lot. Okay, so yeah, we do have some uh, threaded area there, but it's really, really flat. Actually, it doesn't matter anymore. We'll just take it off. It's a bit hot, so got to be careful with that. Take my tweezers and unwrap this. There we go. We've got a threaded area, we've got a non threaded area. We're good. Let me just cool this off for a second. Now we're not just touching the ridges of the threading. lock tightly against the vise we can now further reduce it from 8 right now it's 8 instead of 8.5 to 7.5 here we go let's check the amateur We are at 
7.7 here we go last one yeah it's really really tight over there so let's unscrew it there we go that's all it took just a light touch now will it fit well not the bottom because I didn't do the bottom but the top as you can see fits really really nicely really loose and we're still far from touching the threading so we're good to go I made this from a tube a piece of copper basically from a boiler that's the thermocouple that should be sitting there and a small magnet and the nice thing about steel on the Unimat is that it's easy to clean up I just have to pull the magnet and there we go and there's steel all over the disc so just have it cleaned and we're done of course I'll brush it and clean and all that not everything got hooked onto that magnet and that's all there is to it thanks for watching